Okay, so the purpose of this video is one to put on my website, amanitadreamer.net. So if you are planning to attend a ceremony, then you can watch this for that. And it's also going on YouTube to reach as many people as possible to help you understand the purpose for ceremonying and what it means to our mental health and to us as human beings and where this comes from. So our ancestors in the past, human beings throughout time, through all of history, human beings have had ceremonies. And so in the beginning, it may have been just simple ceremonies, but for all of our time on earth, we've had ceremonies. And so it went something like this. Imagine that you live during the ice age, say, and you are part of a group of people, let's say a tribe of people, and there are about 60 people in your group. And maybe you have married into this and that the tribe you were born into is about a two week walk away and you miss your family. And so what humans would do is to honor and mark celestial events like the equinox and the solstices is they would have huge gatherings. And usually the ones on equinoxes would be smaller gatherings, say within a day or two walk. So those would be more local. And then individual things, say a celebration within your own tribe, maybe people close by within like a 30 minute walk would be invited and could come to those. And then maybe once a year, the largest gathering happens and maybe those are for one of the solstices. And so our ancestors would look forward to this all year long or every six months if it was on each solstice, summer and winter. And so you would, you would look forward to it and you would plan and prepare. And, and let's say that you're a, a knife maker or just knife handles, then you would be planning for this whole event. Maybe you want to barter and trade while you're there. And there's things that you're looking forward to being able to acquire. Maybe there's some hides that you want, some beads that you want. Maybe you're thinking about um, if there were ceremonies for marriage or for bonding with someone else in your group or in your tribe, or maybe there's a young person that you want to take in and teach and be a mentor to and you want to get them a gift, this kind of thing. Maybe uh, for cooking, there's pottery that you saw at the last gathering that you want. And it's no different than, than today, the way that we will go to craft fairs and art shows and that kind of thing. And we hope that those same vendors are there again, because there's something they make that we want, but it's more than that. And so let's say that you are preparing all of the things that you make. If you're a bead maker, then you've been making beads and different people liked different kinds the last time you were there. So you want to make a lot of those. Plus there's a new one that you're bringing. Whatever it is that your skill is and that you do, then that's what you've been preparing. And during the winter months is a really good time to do that because we're not out as much. We're still out, but just not as much. And, and during the worst of it, we're stuck inside. And so this was when we would repair things, fix our clothing and repair tools and, and pottery and cookware and that kind of thing, but also create and tell stories and teach our young or apprentice, people that are apprenticing in whatever it is that we do. I would probably have been a medicine person. And so I have several that I'm working with or that I'm teaching. And maybe my elder that taught me is in another tribe and I will be seeing her again at this ceremony. And it's something that we work really hard for. And then when time comes that it's going to be, say, a two-week journey to get there, then the couple of days before we start deciding who's going to stay behind, what children are going to be going, if people are sick or elderly and they can't make the trip, and then who's going to be sticking behind and running things, and then who's going, and how are you going to pack, and what are you going to carry, and sleeping arrangements, and food that you're going to carry and eat on the journey. And it's a long journey. And it can be a difficult journey, especially if winter is coming or winter is leaving and you still got to contend with some cold nights. And so you 
go on this very long journey for two weeks of traveling. And as you start to get close to the site and you can be seen in the distance, runners start coming out to meet you and they're happy and they sound the alarm. Who's here? Who is it? Who's here? Who is it? And they get really excited. And when they figure out who you are, then a couple of the runners will run back and announce to everybody, it's the so-and-so group. And then people that can't wait to see you, they start running in your direction. They help carry things and you get there and they have an area for you. Everyone sort of pitches their own tents, makes their own campsites. And there's that whole welcoming and getting there. And over the next few days, more and more people are arriving and it gets really big, really exciting. And this is even for the smaller ceremonies. And those who are drum makers and instrument makers, they have also been repairing instruments and making instruments for this event. People who didn't play any last time that want to learn and want to try, they're talking to others, can you teach me a couple of beats and a couple of grooves? And so you'll hear people in the distance playing drums and flutes and there's food everywhere, cooking. But also let's say that you have a couple of garments that need repairing. And so you take them to the garment person. That person knows there's going to be lots of repairs to be made. You're the bead maker. Maybe this person says, I want bead work put around my tunic. So they order that. So your days are full of work, but also happiness, bartering, trading, exchanging, walking around and talking to people. But in the evenings, that's when everyone comes together and they play music and their drums and they chat and they talk and they eat. But the big ceremony is coming. And when they feel like everyone's there, then they say, that's it. Tomorrow night is the big ceremony. And the big ceremony involves in theogens it may involve a couple of marriages or people are planning to leave to cross from one tribe to another and they want to do it ceremonially so usually the entire day would be full of ceremonies leading up to the big ceremony at night and everybody would have a big vat of the drink the ceremonial drink and the drums start at sundown everyone gathers about an hour before sundown the elders take turns talking and thanking everyone for the year, giving gratitude for their creator or the beings that they're there to honor or to the sun or to the earth, to the elders. And maybe there's a new elder that's going to be elected or rising up to that position. And then they settle in and the drums start and people start coming up and they start drinking one by one and the drums start and little by little, everyone starts to get into that trance state. And we're talking about a really big drum circle. And then through the night, people are continuing to drink and re-up and get a little bit more involved and a little bit more inebriated and a little bit more in a trance state and starting to get in touch with the elders. There's chanting, singing, depending on the tribe and their traditions. There's throat singing, there's chant singing, there's traditional songs that everyone knows time after time when they hear those songs, it puts them in a trance state because they've been habituated to that by using whatever the entheogen is along with those drums, along with the fire, along with these people that when they hear that song, it sends them deep into that state. And then whomever is involved in being more of a, a shaman person that helps move energies and spirits will come around and work with different people for different things. There's dancing and shakers. People are up and moving that energy and moving those beings. And depending on the celebration or the solstice, there's different things. They're moving different reasons that they're doing this ceremony. And the ceremony goes long into the night and people are bonding and having sex and going and eating. People are pretending to be warriors and fighting and trading and, and sparring and doing that kind of thing. Other people are just passed out because they really in, took a lot and they're tripping and they're going off in their own spaces. And some people have gone to bed and retreated. These traditions are in every tribe and they are in every group and they go back for hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years with humans. So it is in your DNA and it is part of us in our lineage and part of our brain and part of, of who we are. 
And it has only been a blip in time for the humans that we have stopped doing that. It's only been recent and it's sad and it's part of why we're broken. But I wanted you to understand that you can hear rhythmic drums and given enough time, a good 20 minutes, you will, you can put yourself in a trance state. You can put yourself in a trance state with meditation or with chanting. You can put yourself in a trance state with fire alone, just staring at fire. And that's because we have been habituated for hundreds of thousands of years to that. And you can't just suddenly write that out of your DNA in such a short period of time that we have been without that. So it's still in you. But when you combine all of these things and the most ceremonial of all mushrooms, the Amanita muscaria, then you actually get what is so healing because this is how we're made. Our beings were made this way to ceremony like this on a regular basis. This is very different from a, an Amanita trip that you take alone. This is a completely different way of healing. And what it involves is healing you and helping to cleanse you. And it will cause some emotional healing and changes in the brain and changes in you spiritually and some trauma work. But in addition to that, it's doing something to you that you cannot get when you do it alone. And that is when you combine the energies of the others together in this same space, doing the same thing, combined with not just your drum, but all of the drums combined with the fire and the Amanita, you create a completely different experience that your body knows and knows what to do with. And it's a very deep experience. It's a very broad experience and a very healing experience. I believe it's vital to our mental health. And when you journey with Amanita alone, you hone the skills that you learned when you ceremonied with Amanita as a group. And some of those things include keeping yourself mentally and emotionally clean, vibrating at a higher level, feeling the earth and the earth's vibrations, being in touch with the other humans and wanting to help raise the vibration of the planet and your enlightenment of the planet and the goodness for the planet. But then also in smoking Amanita, which you know, we'll do the anatomy of a ceremony in another video, the smoking of Amanita is a direct path to the elders of the Amanita and of our human ancestors. And when you bring them into the conversation, that's when it just explodes and goes exponential in the power of manifesting in those times. Like we will in, in ceremony that I lead, we do manifesting. And it's crazy the things that you manifest in those ceremonies, how rapidly they happen, because it's the same thing as when you do any other entheogen and you work with it, not just be a victim of it, but you're actually working along with it, hand in hand as partners for healing, that when you can align yourself, clean yourself, make those changes, you open this pathway for you to be the energetic vessel that you're supposed to be and to create the journey that you want. It's like, it, it, it's, it's like manifesting on steroids, but those of you that have done entheogens understand this. If you've worked with the entities or the ancestors or the elders or, or yourself, under the influence of these, you understand what that can do. Well, when you multiply that then by the fact that the Amanita is the time mushroom, it's the time travel mushroom, it is the ceremony mushroom. It works best with groups of other humans and drums and fire. And then you have the elders on board, the fungal and human. Then what happens in that group as we manifest as a group and you manifest individually, it is powerful, the changes that it creates. And this is what our ancestors did. I don't believe we're supposed to feel this broken all the time. This individual, afraid, lonely, alone, depressed, strung out and in fear. I believe that if we are ceremonying on a regular basis, it is so much easier to maintain our individual mental health. And this is what I believe the Amanita want us to know. And I believe that this is why the Amanita are calling me to do this. So I hope I see you at a ceremony. And if not, I'm going to be doing 
more on how to create a ceremony in your area. So stay tuned for that. And thank you for being here. If you want to be a patron and hang out with us on our Zoom meetings, you can go to the Patreon page and support me that way, but support yourself with all of our groups that we have going. I love you, beautiful people. Thanks for being here and happy journeying and happy ceremonying. Bye.